Hello guys, uh, okay, so we just finished uh, a series of videos creating um, our first uh, biped skeleton uh, with a free root, some clavicle bones, and uh, um, clavicle bones, some, uh, cl yeah, a couple clavicles and some sap scapula bones back here. Now, you know, we could, you could go through, certainly customize your rigs if you want, you can go through and add some rib bones coming off of here to have a little bit better control over the torso uh, and what have you. So, you know, obviously uh, feel free to do that. Anyway, uh, I wanted to put together this video here fairly quick and just to show you um, uh, kind of a little disclaimer here. Let me just open this up. I just kind of print this. Uh, basically, what, what we're doing in this class is we're creating a rig that's intended specifically for game engines. Um, the Unreal game engines is pretty much the one we use, but also Unity. Anyway, uh, a lot of game engines are are uh, fairly typical in uh, in how they how they work. So anyway, we're building this rig, uh, you know, specifically to import into a game engine. Um, the design of this rig and the specifics of this rig will will be changed and modified throughout the course. So for right now, I'm just trying to keep it pretty simple. Um, we are going to add a stretchy spine. Um, into this rig later, but for right now, the only inverse combatics we're going to have are around the arms and the legs, uh, obviously in the elbow area, and then in the knee area, and then we're going to um, in, in, uh, install a reverse foot. Anyway, just going to keep it simple to start here, and uh, I'm going to be posting a lot of these Maya files on my blog uh, and some PDF help sheets just to, so you can follow along. What's handy with the Maya files is that they have the naming convention and everything that I use. So uh, again, if you have any questions, drop me an email at school or uh, here on YouTube and I am uh, more than likely to get back to you uh, within the next couple days. So okay, so here's the rig we just created. Um, and. Uh, I'm not sure if I covered this in the last video. It's hard for me to remember. I made a few videos, but I create a custom shelf up here, and my shelves kind of change from here and there because uh, it just depends what computer I'm on and if I've loaded my preferences. However, um, I'm going to use select hierarchy in this one. I'm just going to show you one more time how to do uh, create these buttons. If you get to where you want to be, I want to use select hierarchy and simply hold down the shift to control buttons. That will pop up a, say I had one here before, now it's got two. It'll just put that command right up into the uh, shelf. So we can select hierarchy. Uh, I've got all my bones selected there. Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to get rid of that one because I have one. I just want to show you, just remember, shift control. You can do that anywhere from the hot box, any of these commands, anything you want to do. Okay, so this, here, this is our basic setup. This is the rig that's going to be bound to this mesh. Okay, so um, that is just that's as basic as it can get. That's what's going to go into the game engine is this set of bones, this chain of bones, and the mesh. Uh, however, as you're probably well aware, to control this set of bones with each individual bone is a real pain uh, in the rear for sure. So we set up controls, uh, custom controls, and IK chains and uh, what have you to make uh, the animator's life easier, and that is our job as rigger. So uh, here is basically what I, I this is the the file that I finished, but I have this. These are the bind joints. That's all of them, right? Now in our FK joints, um, when we're doing forward chromatics, we we want to enable the animator to have complete control over every single bone. So I'm just simply duplicated the entire set of bones for the FK joints. Okay, so these FK bones are going to control. Turn those off. And they're going to control the bind joints. These are the only ones that are going to be bound to this to the mesh. So now in the inverse schematics, uh, the inverse joints, like I said, we're going to add a stretchy spine later. Right now, I just have the arms and the clavicle, and then the legs because that's what we're going to set up. Um, you know, I know my PDF file has a final. Thing. I'm not going to go through and open the whole final scene right now. Uh, if I get time, maybe I'll try and slice an image in right here. Uh, okay, so now I have these uh, other bones. Now what I'm going to do is, um, uh, just to, so you guys know how I did this, IK, I'm going to uh, select all the objects. I can't select objects. There we go. 
and I'll go ahead and just um, delete these and okay so those are all gone so I have an IK joints layer that's empty right and I'll do I guess I'll just do the same thing with this select IRC delete okay so now I have two empty layers and I have my bind bind joints now this is uh, we're exactly where we were when we left off in the last video. Let me make sure I'm recording. Yes. Okay. Exactly where we we're in the left in the last video. So, in order to do this, now the FK, I know I need all of these. So, very simple. I select all of these, and I duplicate, and I put them on a new layer. And I'm gonna, you know, make a new layer. I just clicked over here, and I'll make a new layer, and then name it um, FK Joints Layer. So I'm just gonna click on this and say add I don't understand well yeah okay new my uh, add selected objects okay so now if I turn the bind joints layer off we're gonna have nothing and my FK joints are on now the problem with this is all of our joints are gonna be have a one at the end um, I could open this up at just the top so all of these joints have been named the same exact way okay which Maya will let you do um, I don't know why, but anyway, it does. Uh, it, this is going to get real confusing, obviously, if we don't rename these. So while this is selected, this is really easy to do. And the comment under Tools, Comment Rename, and all we're going to do is just put a suffix on these tools, all of them. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We're going to search and replace. Because did I do? Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Um, I did name that first skeleton bind. So I have root joint bind which is very good habit actually. So I am going to search and replace. So I'm going to search for bind. If you didn't do this, you can just add um, FK at the end right here. Suffix. I don't think you can do that in Maya. Just add a suffix. Anyway, whatever. I'm going to search for bind. I'm going to replace it with FK. And uh, well, that should be pretty easy. There it goes. It's going to do all these on the whole chain except for the first one. Notice it's got this one at the end, and it's Maya's always going to do that. So make sure you get rid of that single one. So now I have root, root joint FK. So now I have a completely renamed set, and just going to look at the hypergraph. Make sure I don't have any other ones in there. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Pretty pretty easy for those. Okay. Um I'll close this. Okay, so that's it. Um we're gonna set up the controls on the FK joints later, but again, you want to give the animator complete control all over all this. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the FK joints. Now this one's uh, well it's as tricky as it gets, which which is not very tricky. Um okay, I'm gonna select the arm. Oops, I need to go up to the clavicles. I just tap the up arrow on my board. And uh, I don't think, yeah, just these two legs. Okay? And that's all I'm going to set up with the uh, with the IK right now. Later I'm going to be putting in the, F, the uh, IK on the spline. So um, well, I guess you could do that if you wanted um, these tutorials. I'm not going to do it. Uh, okay, so I have these selected. I'm going to duplicate those. And I'm going to put those on my IK layer. And they should disappear. The highlights should disappear. And turn off these. Turn off. Oops. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see what happened. They didn't. Did they get parented? Um, okay. Interesting. I don't remember that happening last time. Okay. Um. They got, oh, because I duplicated and they were already parented. No big deal. Uh, I'm not sure what I did last time. It didn't seem to do that. But so that these are, as long as they're selected, let's say you accidentally off-select on these and you're like, wow, where did my go? They're still on the, the they're still on, um, they're on the bind joints. They're on the IK joints layer, but they're parented into the bind joints. So turn that one off and then just right and say select objects that you moved onto that layer. Okay, they're hidden because they're on this bind joints layer. Instead of turning that on, simply go into the hypergraph. Now this is where we were. We've got our four top ones highlighted. And because they're like this, simply 
middle mouse button on any one of them and drag them over here. Okay, so we're going to unparent all four of those chains. Uh, these are still hidden. Not sure why. Let's, let's troubleshoot. Let's see. Whoops. Hmm. I did something where um, I didn't have the hierarchy selected, maybe. I just got those clavicles. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm hoping to do this in 15 minutes, so let me troubleshoot while I'm paused. Okay, sorry about that. Um, again, I guess uh, it's good that it happens while I'm doing this video. Um, what happens when I went up with the up arrow to select that clavicle, you can see this one's green, and if we look in the hierarchy, those are still hidden. What I failed to do was select the hierarchy of those again before I put them onto the IK joints layer. So by selecting hierarchy, and then I'm going to right click here and just say add selected objects, and they're going to jump back onto our IK joints layer. Okay, so under the hypergraph, <clears throat> there we go. They're all highlighted, I can deselect off of those. They're all showing, they're not parented over here, and they're, they're set up the way we want. Okay, and then same thing. Um, what I can do is select both of those. Make sure you hit select hierarchy. These select hierarchy, and then we're just going to go into Comet Tools Rename. And these, what do these have on them? Bind again. Okay, which is good. So search bind replace this is going to be our IK chain so we're going to replace with IK search and replace now um, double check these top joints uh, they're more than likely to have a one at the end of them here we go right here it changed the IK and left the one and it sometimes it just does it to one sometimes it does all the top joint chains that's how Maya is going to identify duplicates so make sure you go through did it on all these at the top Okay. Okay. All right. So now we're now we're ready to proceed. We're ready to put some controls on here. Of course, we're going to put an IK from the elbow to the wrist, and we're going to set this up. Now, it's really important that when you're setting up the IK and the IK controls, you're working on the IK joints layer. Okay. I mean, this is extremely important. Um, and then at the same point in time, when you're setting up FK controls, you're on the FK joint layer. If you set up controls on the bind joint layer, we're going to run into huge issues. So um, just make sure that when you're setting up the IK, you're on this. I know when I do the leg, like for instance, the leg video, I think everything else is pretty much hidden. Uh, and if you don't notice the IK in my videos, um, it was just simply I was setting up uh, uh, the reverse leg without the right extension on there. So uh, I can't explain enough how important it is to make sure that you have this hierarchy set up. Uh, okay, so um, probably running out of my 15 minutes here. I'm going to pause and just think of anything else I need to say. Okay, yeah, ex except for the fact that I, I my challenge is trying to create these in 15 minutes so I don't have to take time and manually break these up. But uh, I don't know how much more that's going to happen. Anyway, uh, so we can go through and, uh, you know, you can go through and just make sure that all these have IK on the ends of them. Um, now, one, one side note is that uh, when we are working in Unreal or bringing this character into Unreal, uh, these other, we want to be able to leave these, all these joints in here in the file. So we're going to put an extension on the end of there on the end of these later. Now this is specifically for Unreal, and I believe it's exclude. So underscore and then all caps, E-X-C-L-U-D-E. -E. So the Unreal, when we are uh, parsing that into the Unreal Engine, it will not bring these bones in. We do not want to bring these in. Um, again, these are going to be set up to control the bind joints through constraints.